Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a really fun puzzle I came across. You are to make the number 100 from four nines using common mathematical operations. What exactly are common mathematical operations? The puzzle doesn't specify, so I thought, let's make this a little more concrete and put down some rules. So here's a standard calculator on a mobile phone. Now, some numbers should be allowed and some numbers should not be allowed. So, of course, we'll get rid of all of the other digits. You're only allowed to use the digit 9, and you have to use it four times. We will also exclude using pi or e. There would be like adding a new number. Also, you can press the inverse button, and you'll end up with some inverse functions. Now, from my experience, you're typically not allowed to use things like x squared because it introduces the digit 2. So let's get rid of x squared. We'll also get rid of e to the x, and it's up to you, but personally, I would get rid of 10 to the power of x. It just seems like a massive cheat. Inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent do have a negative one, but they're not really digits. These are more inverse function notations, and we're going to write them as arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. So, here's the puzzle. You have this calculator. You can use the buttons that are shown. You have to press the button 9 exactly four times, and you want the result to show 100. How can you do it? So let's see how we can solve this puzzle. So sometimes when you solve these puzzles, it makes sense to start from the goal and work backwards to the beginning. So we could start with 100 and work backwards. We could also just power our way through from the beginning to the end to solve this problem. So let's think about these two approaches. So in one approach, we are going to start with 100 and try to work backwards. So 100 is equal to 99 plus 1. It's equal to 100 plus 9 minus 9. It's equal to 90 plus 9 plus 1. It's equal to 10 times 10. It's equal to 10 divided by 0.1. It's also equal to 900 divided by 9. These are just some ideas that we're brainstorming. If we could somehow make the four nines equal to any of these lines, we would get an answer. And in fact, all of the solutions are kind of variations on these ideas. Now, from the four nines, what numbers can we make? Well, 9 divided by 9 is equal to 1. 99% is equal to 0.99. 9 times 9 is equal to 81. The square root of 9 is equal to 3. If we take the factorial of that, that's equal to 3 factorial, which equals 6. We can again take the factorial of that. So 6 factorial is equal to 720. Thinking trigonometrically, cosine of 0 degrees is equal to 1. Every multiple of 360 degrees will also give us the same result. So cosine of 720 degrees is equal to 1. So we're going to use all these facts and come up with some solutions. So when I saw this puzzle online, the solution presented was 99 plus 9 over 9 is equal to 100. The trick is that you're using four nines, but you're combining two of them into one number, 99. It feels a little bit like cheating, but it's within the rules that we've stated. Now, 9 over 9 is equal to 1, so we have 99 plus 1 is equal to 100. So this is one way to get the answer. But I thought there must be other ways of finding the solution. So I posted this on the YouTube community tab, and I got over 500 comments from you, and I tried to read as many as I could. So I want to share some of the interesting solutions people came up with. So here's one, 99 divided by 0.99 is equal to 100. How does this work? This is the same thing as 99 divided by 99 over 100. This is the same thing as 99 multiplied by 100 over 99. The 99s cancel out, so we get to 100. So 99 divided by 0.99 is equal to 100. A similar idea is 99 divided by 99%. This is also equal to 100. Next solution, 9 divided by 0.9 multiplied by 9 divided by 0.9 is equal to 100. This is because 9 divided by 0.9 is equal to 10, 
So we have 10 times 10, which of course equals 100. Next, we have 9 divided by 9% plus 9 minus 9 is equal to 100. Or similarly, 9 divided by 9% multiplied by 9 over 9 is equal to 100. This is because 9 divided by 9% is equal to 9 divided by 0 0.09 is equal to 100. So you can then add 9 and subtract 9, or you can multiply by 9 over 9, which is equal to 1. You will end up with 100. Another solution is 9 times 9 plus 9. Take that whole thing, divide it by 0.9. You will get 100. This is because the numerator becomes 81 plus 9, and the denominator is 0.9. So we have 90 divided by 0.9, which is, of course, equal to 100. Now we have a very different solution. 99 plus the cosine of 9 minus 9, this will be equal to 100. So why does this work? Well, 9 minus 9 is equal to 0. So we have 99 plus cosine of 0. And whether you're in degree mode or radian mode, cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So we have 99 plus 1, which is equal to 100. Let's continue with the trigonometric solutions. We have the arc cosine of 9 minus 9 plus 9 plus the cosine of 9 factorial. Now for this solution, your calculator has to be in degree mode. So how does it work out? 9 minus 9 is equal to 0, and the arc cosine of 0 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. We then have the cosine of 9 factorial degrees. So 9 factorial is equal to 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. 6 factorial is equal to 720. That is twice 360. So 9 factorial is going to end up being a multiple of 360. Now, the cosine of 9 factorial degrees will therefore be the same thing as the cosine of a multiple of 360 degrees, and that is equal to 1. So let's do this calculation. We have 90 for the arc cosine of 9 minus 9, plus 9, and then the cosine of 9 factorial degrees will be equal to 1. So this is all going to work out to 90 plus 9 plus 1, which does equal 100. Wow. Here's another solution, which is quite remarkable. We have the cosine of, we have the square root of 9, we want the factorial of that, we take the factorial of the result, then we add 9 and we multiply it by the same thing. So why does this work out? So you want to make sure again you're in degree mode. So the cosine of 720 degrees is equal to 1. So square root of 9 is equal to 3. 3 factorial is equal to 6. If we take the factorial again, we get to 720. So this basically works out to 1 plus 9 multiplied by 1 plus 9, which equals 100. So it's quite an interesting way that we can get to 100. So it does actually work on the calculator. You can see how it works out. Here's another clever solution. So we have the square root of 9, we want the factorial, and then we want the factorial of that result. So that whole thing will be 720. We're dividing that by 0.9. Then we want to divide this by 9 minus the cosine of what will work out to be 720. Again, we want the calculator to be in degree mode. So the first thing is 720. We're dividing it by 0.9. And then we're going to have this is equal to 800. We then are going to divide it by 9 minus the cosine of 720. That'll be equal to 1. So that becomes 9 minus 1. So we're taking 800 and dividing it by 8, which will, of course, be equal to 100. So let's just input this into the calculator to see that it actually does work. So now here is another solution. I'm just going to say the first thing will be 720, and then we want to subtract 720 divided by 3 factorial, that'll be equal to 6, 
and then we divide this by 6. So this will all work out to be 720 minus 720 over 6. We divide that by 6. This works out to be 600 divided by 6, which is, of course, equal to 100. Now here's a final solution, which is completely amazing and crazy, and it's worth understanding why it works. So this expression is a fraction where we have the logarithm of something in the numerator and the logarithm of something in the denominator. Each logarithm has a fraction as an argument, and they're kind of similar to each other. So in the numerator, we have the logarithm of the logarithm of 9 divided by the logarithm of 100 square roots of the logarithm of 9. And in the denominator, we have the log of a fraction, which is log 9 divided by the log of square root of 9. So let's first examine this denominator. Let's look at this fraction, log 9 divided by log of the square root of 9. So the square root of 9 can also be written in fractional exponent form as 9 to the power of 1 half. So the log of 9 to the power of 1 half, we can take that power of 1 half and bring it to the front. So we now have log 9 divided by 1 half multiplied by log of 9. The log of 9's will cancel out, then we have 1 divided by 1 half, which will work out to be 2. So now let's think about this argument in the numerator. So we can rewrite the 100 square roots of 9 in fractional exponent form. So this will be 9 to the power of 1 over 2 to the power of 100. So since we have logarithms, we'll bring this exponent power to the front. So this works out to be log 9 divided by 1 over 2 to the power of 100 multiplied by log 9. The log 9s will cancel, and we have 1 divided by 1 over 2 to the power of 100. This will work out to be 2 to the power of 100. So let's finally do this calculation. The numerator will work out to be log of 2 to the power of 100. The denominator will just be log of 2. We can then simplify this by bringing that exponent of 100 to the front. So we have 100 multiplied by log of 2 divided by log of 2. The log 2s will cancel out. So this all simplifies to be 100. So now let's go ahead and put this in the calculator and just verify that it works. I will say I was able to do this in one take. I was able to count out exactly 100 square roots without mistake. Now one thing you're going to see is that the calculator is going to have some slight rounding errors. It's going to show something that's very close to 100, but not exactly 100. But rest assured, this does evaluate to exactly 100. What an incredible solution. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.